All right, Nicolette, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Yes, we're super excited to hear about your story. You've got a really interesting background, and I know that you've set up some badass boundaries that I really want to get into. So why don't you just tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, Nicolette? Oh, okay. So I am 33 years old, um, Mexican and Filipino from Southern California and doing all the things. I podcast, YouTube, um, all of that centered around self-healing, but it's come to this transition of like, now I'm just empowering women and women of color, you know, and that's just like my whole mission is to get uh, women and men to feel better about themselves, uh, to like reclaim their power, you know? And um, yeah, that's basically it. I was thinking like, you know, when I was about to be here, like, what is it that I do? And I was like, you empower women. And that was it, you know, like, yes. Like, yeah, that's, I feel like that's my mission in life is to help remind them uh, how amazing they are. I think it's because I didn't have that growing up. Like I did and I didn't. You know what I mean? It wasn't like intentional. And I feel like um, with self-healing, I want to be more intentional with life. And that's what I want to inspire. And so that's where how my podcast is based out of everything that I do is with just that reminder to hopefully inspire one person to like remind themselves that they can empower themselves and all of that, that they're complete and whole as they are, you know? And, um, yeah, and just doing that all across the board and on Clubhouse, social media. So, yeah, that's like my mission in life now. (laughs) So (laughs) that's what the airplane that I want to own one day says, like, evolve with Nicolette. Yes. (laughs) I love that plane. That's a good visual. Yes. A pink plane that everybody needs to jump in with me. You know what I mean? Like, let's go. So Sidia had... um talked to me when she was talking about you about these amazing boundaries that you've set specifically with your family. And we've talked about boundaries extensively here on the show, the roles that we play within our family. Mm. So I was really interested to hear your story about, because from what I understand, you've actually separated from certain members of your family. And Mm. I just kind of want to explore a little bit of what was going on at that time what finally was the straw that broke the camel's back where you're, you were just like, fuck this, I'm out. Um, if you can just maybe talk a little bit about that. Oh, man. You know what it is? Like, I've come to realize that it's not even me at the end of the day. It's a lot of generational trauma. So I just background, um, I have intentionally stopped talking to my mother's um, sister's. And basically that whole side of the family. Um, There's a lot of generational trauma there. Shit that just has been brewing for decades from when the, from the day my mother was born to up until what, almost seven years ago, I think now, seven, six years ago, I think even more. Um, And with her turmoil, with her um, siblings, she was essentially the youngest, I think six or seven And she was raised separate from them and lived a very decent life in Mexico. Whereas my grandmother and the rest of my aunts and my uncle struggled and experienced some pretty crazy shit. And my mom can't really attest to none of that because she was a baby, you know? So she doesn't really like know the extent of the shit that they went through. Um, and they hated my mom. They'll always like, uh, keep that against my mom for how she was able to have a different life than them that she had no control over. You know what I mean? Like she was taken from her mother by her biological father and placed with other family members to live a better life. Um, which I'm so blessed that even though that man was not the greatest person in the world, that he did that for my mom. Um, because I probably wouldn't be who I am because, you know, that set like a whole different cycle for my mom in her life, you know, um, not that she had, my mom had, has had a very hard life, but it's given her a different perspective 
different than my aunts. And just to sum up, like, because that's the thing too, this is all with love, never any type of hate. I don't want to harm anybody. You know, this is just my truth and my part of the story. Uh, but my, my grandmother and my aunts and stuff have suffered so much trauma where they have internalized all that to hurt other people. You know, I think it's because, you know, they were never taught how to cope or to love properly or to be loved on properly. Right. Um, and it manifested in their children, you know, the next generation of women after them. Um, so Not only did our mothers have issues, then us as cousins had issues also. And it was just just all, now that I step back from that whole situation, it was all trauma that just was just passed down, you know, beliefs and all these things. And um, as I got older, uh, I realized that I don't have to take that shit anymore. You know, I don't have to be in situations that make me feel like shit. And just because they're blood related to me, um, I don't have to put up with that. Right. I don't have to engage in that anymore Uh, because I engaged with in it for a very long time. I uh, stopped talking to them in 2014 and um, made that decision. Um, even though it may sound like very, very small, our our family's small, like probably like 30 people only uh, of like immediate, my mom's siblings and like their kids and stuff. Right. Um, And it ended up being like, just, you know, family events that we weren't getting invited to. Um, And we had actually a huge death uh, the year prior or actually, yeah, the year prior. And my cousin, Ivania, like my big sister passed away and she was essentially the glue to all of us. And when she passed away, that was like when all hell broke loose and we just couldn't keep it together. And um, it was, and that that's what shined the light on like, oh my God, all the situations that I, that I'm in is so bad. And where I'm crying and constantly overanalyzing, like, what did I say? Or like, what did I do? And all these things that were just like making me so self-conscious and like a big fun sucker, like, oh my God, I hated the person that I was back then. And I was already a mom already. I was a mother of two. I'm married. And then seeing how it's now affecting my husband, right? It's now affecting me as a mom in front of my children. I was like, oh, hell no. They deserve, I deserve to be happy, right? They deserve to have a happy mom. Um, So I basically was like, when I wasn't invited to a couple of things, I was like, well, I'm just going to take the hint. I'm just not going to come around anymore. Mm -hmm. And let's see if you guys can come find, you know, if you guys want to have a relationship with me, you guys can invite me to whatever you want. So kind of just took the hint and, um, and just like took them off of social media first. And then that's when the bell started sounding off of like, why did you block me? Why did you do this? I was like, girl, you're not even talking to me. So what I'm just following your lead, you know what I mean? And just, that was it and just hasn't been anything since then. My mom has gotten a lot of nasty text messages from her sisters throughout the years, you know, but always blaming her of like, what's wrong with you? Why are you being like this? And it's like, it's just time, you know? So yeah, that's basically like the sum of it all without getting into the nitty gritty of details, but yeah, just saying like, stop. And I don't have to participate in this anymore. And that was it. And changing the cycle for my kids that they don't have to be a part of that, you know? Um, So it was years leading up to that. So not just like my own personal things, but also my mom, right? Like what she's about to be 60 next year. So 50 years of all that trauma and drama, you know? And she finally was like, yo, you guys are hurting my daughter too. I can't do this anymore. You guys can do it to me. But I can't because I didn't give her like the ultimatum, like, I'm not talking to your sister, so you shouldn't, you know, it was, I got to go and you just deal with that if you want to. Because time and time again, my mom's always like, all right, it's okay, we'll we'll forgive and forget and move on. 
And it my mom like got tired of that shit. It, yeah. it sounds like she's at least supportive of you not engaging with her sisters and yes. her cousins. Yes. Uh, Cause it was, it was vicious. Like uh, just, they can cut you just the same. I can do the same thing. We're all cut from, we were cut from a, the same cloth. I feel like uh, just the same way how they can cut me with their words. I can do that to somebody else. But I realized that I don't have to do that to people, right? Like I can be vicious with my words. So like uh, for her, she was just sick of them just talking shit about me, my husband, you know, everything. It's, it's really like that type of family where if you're happy, they hate that you're happy you know, mm. yeah, because misery loves company, right? You can't, yes. you can't break free from that. So no. what was that like for you to just say, you know what, I'm going to take that, I'm going to take your lead and just yeah. let, let these relationships go. It was painful. It's, I think it's even worse than a death because I know that they're alive somewhere, right? Like I know that they're living their life and it's not even, you know, my, just my aunts and my girl cousins and my guy cousins like it's their kids that I miss right that my kids are not going to be able to grow up with theirs the way how we grew up that's the thing too is that it wasn't all sad and drab we had a fantastic like family type of gathering setting right but we just could not or they just could not um kind of like just let the good times just fucking keep us together it always had to be toxicity and drama it always had to be like high intense shit high uh, fight or flight all the time um and it just yeah it just had to had to stop and for me I wasn't just grieving my cousin who had just passed away and when someone dies from cancer it's the worst because they're not just they don't just die in that moment they had been deteriorating you know what I mean like you're, you're watching them die and it's so that was already traumatic in itself. And my family has a very hard time when people pass away. It's just because we don't know how to cope. Right. Um, but then when it was time to like, I'm grieving her and then now I got to grieve them. Like, you know, cause I can grieve not having the relationship that I wanted with them anymore. You know, like I'm grieving, not having that family dynamic anymore, but peace was more important than all of that at the end of the day, you know, me not being um, sad and in the dumps and depressed from all these things, you know, like, why doesn't she like me? Why are we fighting? You know, like just, it was just constant. It was constant fight or flight. And that shit is not healthy at all. Um, So it, it had been hard. So I probably haven't, I wasn't really at peace with it probably until like three years ago. Where I was just like, hey, I just, you know, it just is what it is. But I'm sad all the time because I don't have a relationship with my nephews and stuff like that. And that's what hurts me the most. Because my cousin who passed away, she left a son. Um, He was about 14, 15 when she passed. And now he's like 20 something. So I missed out on his important years where he doesn't have his mom, but at least he had us, you know, but to not add to his grief he didn't also need like all that drama you know I didn't want to participate in hurting him either you know so it's it's definitely hard and it makes me sad especially around the holidays it's even harder for my mom because those are her sisters you know um but the peace is better being okay with my life is better before cutting off ties on social media Mm -hmm. Was there anything you were trying to do to either reconcile or restore or establish boundaries with the family members that were kind of encroaching on your peace? Mm. So yes and no, because, uh, you know, it was a bunch of different types of things that happened up until that moment. Right. So we would fight about something or they would be mad that I said something. Right. And we'd stop talking for a couple months we'll stop talking for about a year or so or something. So most of my twenties, it was always on and off with them. And uh, it's always me going back. And actually when my um, oldest son, he's 10 years old now, um, when he was born, me and my cousin, Ivanya, who had passed, weren't talking and I missed her incredibly. And I just, I just knew 
that she wasn't going to come to me. Like, you know, we we're going to stay the way how we are. Right. And I just took my son and brought him to her to meet her. And that's how we reconcile is always either my mom or, or myself would go to them and just walk through the door and be like, what's up? Like, let's just forget what happened. So we'd never talk about problems. We'd never um, discuss like what hurt us and stuff like that. It would just be like, okay, let's just move on not talk about it. Pretend it, it didn't happen, you know? But when shit would blow up again, it would be a big old bomb that went off each and every time, you know, just because we're no one's talking about it. Our moms would do that. And then my cousins, we'd do the same. Um, so and, and your cousins are like your sisters, right? Because Oh, yeah, I, because our sisters. Yes. Yeah, so our family's so small, you know, and uh, it's nothing but women in our family. I have no uncles uh, in like in marriage. So unless the one that like my, my mom's brother, uh, cause, uh, nobody can keep a man girl. So like, that's how toxic <laughs> that's like, to just to paint the picture, like just how toxic that is. Um, so like it, we're all alphas, right. At the end of the day, strong, badass women, but we just could not keep it together. And, uh, up in that year, um, I would ask like, Hey, what's going on? Like, why is this happening? And they were just giving me the cold shoulder. So I was just kind of tired. I felt like a fucking hurt puppy. And I was tired of like, it felt like I was begging and I don't need to be in a relationship with people who I need to beg to be a part of me, you know, or to love me the way how I love them. So yeah, before blocking them on social media, I definitely tried to like, what's going on? Or I didn't get it. And nobody was really responding at all. Um, so I had to just cut them off because when I would see them living their life and it was like, how come they didn't tell me about that? Like, why am I not being invited to things, you know? And it was intentional for them to hurt me like that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to see it anymore. You know so I- what I mean? Yeah. So I know emotional trauma can be some of the hardest things to move past. And you mentioned that you kind of split from certain family members back in 2014, but you've really only come to terms with it about three years ago. With, With that said, who has supported you through this major transition and how did they demonstrate this to you? Oh man, my husband, that poor thing has had to hear me cry so bad over like, why don't they love me? Or I don't understand, you know? Um, And he was actually the one who was like, um, that was basically like, they're not telling you about this event because they're not going to invite you to go. So it was actually him who lifted the veil of like, you know, sitting in a conversation and seeing how I'm trying to ask about a certain situation and they're not really giving me all the info. And because, you know, he's that outsider kind of looking in, he was the one that was able to put together, like, they're not telling you anything, any, any info about this, because you're not going to be invited to that. And I was like, what? Yeah. What was that like having him shine the light there? Oh my God. That's when the whole life, my whole life changed in that moment because he was the one that was like there hello nobody's telling you shit because you're not going to that event i was like you're right that's why nobody wants to tell me anything and it was like this big old like you know like the clouds cleared the birds were singing like holy shit bitch like you're over here acting like a little puppy and he was the one that was able to you know shine that light and that was very painful to realize like, Oh crap, you know? And that's when the tide changed and I got control of that motherfucking boat and was like, Oh, well, okay. So I get it now and I get the hint and I'm just gonna bow out gracefully. Cause I don't need to be uh, somewhere where I'm not wanted, you know? And he totally supported that. And was there to hear all of my cries. Cause that, it, that's hard to come to when you understand that like people are not reciprocating the love back that you expect from them. Right. You expect that from your family members, right? Like out of anybody in the world, nobody else's blood runs through, um, you know, their body, like their veins, like they do mine. You know what I mean? Like we share 
you know, we have the same like type of DNA. Like it, like I, I thought it was like a contract, but no, it's totally conditional. And well, that's when my whole life changed basically. Yeah. So, you know, I mentioned this earlier before we started recording, which is, you know, we'll cut off friends and other relationships if they start to become toxic yet collectively as a society, we feel like, okay, well, family is family and, you know, nothing's oh. thicker than blood. Why yeah. do you think that we tend to keep in touch with our family despite the emotional or the harmful emotional effects it has on us? I think it's because we, like we were brought into this world with them, right? Like this is the family you were born into. This is your normal. If you grew up, you know, I know that everybody grows up different, right? But like I grew up, like these were my first friends, right? Like my cousins are your first friends, you know, your, your, you know, my, my aunties were like my other mother, you know, like just they're an extension of like your immediate family. Right. So, uh, they're the, I feel like they're the ones that love you first, at least in my situation, it was like that, right? Like family parties and all the, all these events and things, and they're coming over when times get hard deaths and birthday parties, you know, your family is the ones that are right there. So you're thinking that this is supposed to when it's, I don't know, like it's, so yeah, that's why I think why, we're all conditioned that way. We all, that's most of us have that type of family dynamic. And that's why we expect more. There's an expectation there for the, you to ride with me for, you know, right. What's that saying in like game of Thrones or something like blood of my blood. Like that's right. That's the attachment. Like nobody else, uh, you know, has, should have my back the way how my family does, but that's not, that's not everybody. You know, that's definitely something that somebody has to reciprocate back to you. You you mentioned earlier that really it's been the last three years that you um, accepted this reality, right, of there there being the separation. Now, um, how does that relate to your self-healing journey that you've been on? Oh, that was the that was the catalyst, right? Just because it was that when you're so broken like that, or when you're experiencing a broken experience like that, because I'm not a broken person, I am a a whole complete person having a broken experience. When I was tired of feeling sad, like I had to lift myself up. And that was totally internal, like, you know, like just doing that self-realization, self-reflection of like, life isn't supposed to be sad like this, you know, at least I don't think it's supposed to be. So um, I'm tired of crying and I want to feel joy again. So it was just that constant of like, you know, just one step after the other and just going to remind, yeah, I'm going to remind myself every single day to practice um, giving myself the love that I deserve, right? Because I can't have attachment from, you know, that my happiness cannot be attached to anyone else, but myself. If it comes from everybody, from people uh, around me, that's an addition to the love I have for myself, right? So it was just, doing those little baby steps to feel better because I was tired of feeling sad and broken. And not only that, um, you know, I had mentioned that my family has been through a lot of like death, my mom's side of the family. Um, My brother uh, was murdered um, when I was 10. So that was a big traumatic situation in my mom's family and dynamic and how they treated her through that situation was absolutely vile. And I didn't realize any of those things until, you know, I was like way older in my twenties. So it's this thing of like having to put all those broken pieces together, you know, and realizing I don't have, I don't have to uh, subscribe to this anymore. And that's why I started self-healing and doing that inner work. And to tell you the truth, I started the self-healing because therapy in the United States is so expensive or else I would have totally done it with help, right? Because doing it by yourself is messy and sad and all of the things. Um, 
but it was, it was a mission for me to feel better. Cause I knew that this, this isn't, this feeling wasn't it, you know what I mean? And I just knew that there's another side of that. Um, and, and then the realizing that you don't have to go through all that traumatic, like all those traumatic things to feel joy, right? Like you don't have to go through this big old rough life to feel good, you know? Um, so, cause that's also something that I don't want to, like when I share my story is that like, oh, well she deserves happiness. No, you deserve happiness regardless, you know? Um, so yeah, that's why the self-healing journey had to start or else that what's the point of living, right? Like what's the point of life if you're not experiencing, you know, happiness and it doesn't have to be on like a huge scale, just like, you know, being thankful for your life and being thankful for life itself. You know what I mean? I hope that came off, you know, explain yeah. myself properly. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that makes sense because I mean, just kind of hearing you drop this bombshell about a murdered brother. I, yeah. It's, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. But in the time that I've gotten to know you through clubhouse the last several months, I've never heard you talk about that. Right. Like you yeah. are talking about your, self-love and just mm. loving yourself and really working on yourself. And I think yeah. that that just goes to your credit of, yeah, I, I'm not just trauma dumping and sharing my whole story. Yeah. And having everybody be like, Oh, well, yeah, of course she deserves it. No, I deserve it. Period. Regardless of what I've Regardless. gone through. Yes. I th- oh I my God. Yeah. And that's, and that it was also, you know, like along with the self, along with coming to peace with, the disassociation or like, you know, the separation from my family. Um, I have come to peace with also my brother's death that I don't have to retell it every single time to talk about the journey to, ha- you know, to talk about feeling joy again. Right. Because um, I, you know, like I said, we're whole complete people having, you know, broken experiences, traumatic experiences, you know what I mean? Like those, I'm not gonna, I used to wear my brother's death, like a badge of honor, you know, like, oh, I went through this and that's why I get to be this way, you know? And it's like, no, I've already processed it enough where like, I don't have to talk about it anymore to, you know, like I'm at peace and not at like event, like essentially like I'm tired of crying about it. Right. Or, you know, like giving that explanation, because I feel like people that's that I don't want to keep on doing the verbal dump, right? Like doing sharing the experiences or unpacking it with everybody just to share the wisdom, I could share the wisdom with just maybe mentioning it, but Mm -hmm. not having to unpack all of that. Um, You know, because like that, nobody's going to understand that story, unlike myself, right? And I've come to realize that because it's been so long that he's passed away that I romanticized him in my mind, like what he could have been and what we could be doing. And that's also not that healthy either. Right. Like it's, 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 it's what happened in the period that he was with me. That's how it was going to be, you know, and that was just a part of my journey and that was it. And just live, life the way how I know that he'd want me to live it. And that was about it. And I don't have to mention it every single time just to teach women that they can have like happiness and joy in their life. You know what I mean? Uh, But understand that when people um, share uh, their stories of grief, that I could share with them a little bit of mine, you know, because definitely grief was a part or the reason why I had to also start self-healing because I experienced a lot of grief at a very young age. Um, and I wore it on my shoulders for many years because I never was taught how to process it and how to cope. Um, and just, I've done so much self-healing that it's just like, okay, we can not let it go, but like, just move on now, you know, and, and help women like just process those types of like things that it doesn't have to define them but just add to who they are. Knowing that you were going to kind of break from family. I know that some people were thinking like, okay, well, you know, unfriending your, your cousins or your family members on social media, isn't that big, but you kind of already knew some Mm. of the repercussions that were, that would happen as a result of that. Um, So, you know, and, and then this journey to self-healing, all of which are difficult, um, 
things to take on. Where did you find the strength to do to start this? I don't know. <laughs> like it, you know, it's just like I was saying. Like I, it, when you're feeling so low, <laughs> the only you know everybody you can have a ton, you can have thousands of people around you telling you how amazing you are, telling you all the things that you deserve in this life, but only you could be the one who turns the fucking light bulb on, right? So it's up to you, like realizing like your your self worth. Um, and uh, for me, it, you know, of course, like people telling me around me that I don't deserve that, obviously, like, you know, we'll set some bells off, but you have to be the one at the end of the day that you know that you deserve better, right? And turning that light on yourself. And because it's like, no, oh, my God, like the world isn't this dark, right? It doesn't have to be um, sad all the time, or I don't have to be experiencing pain all the time. And it's not on some toxic positivity shit either. It's honoring the journey and knowing that I don't have to be re-experiencing it all the time. Cause every time I retell the story or whatever, essentially I'm reliving it every time I retell it. Right. So I'd rather share the wisdom rather than unpacking it, you know, just doing little, uh, tidbits here and there of how unhealthy that is because um, protecting your peace, even though it may be small to people by unfriending somebody, but if that's what makes you feel better, yes, block somebody. Yes, unfriend somebody because mentally you're reprocessing it and reliving it all the time you see that person, right? So, you know, with uh, your subconscious mind doesn't know any different. Right. So if you keep on rethinking or worrying about the same thing over and over again, even if it hasn't came to fruition, your mind doesn't, your subconscious mind doesn't know that. So to get to a healthier place, like a healthier mindset, uh, you can honor that those thoughts are there, but you don't have to reside there all day long. Right. So knowing that I can, all right, I understand that I'm feeling this way right now. I don't, that's, that's not me anymore. I'm not subscribing to that anymore. You know what I mean? Like you can be like, okay, I'm okay with this. Let's move on. So just based on what you're saying though, is there something that you do to help you, uh, as you put it, not reside there? Mm. Yeah. I mean, it definitely is. Um, like, let's say, let's say I'm having like a bad day or something and I miss them very, very much. I'll, I'll attach myself to the good times, right? Of like, damn, like it was, you know, family parties were great. And, you know, music will bring that up for me all the time. And instead of having to rethink like, oh, well, I'll, you know, like instead of having to like relive all the bad things, just like, damn, that's unfortunate that we can't get it together, you know, or that things are the way how they are. But I, I don't wish them any harm in those moments. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've come to peace. Not that I'm saying that I have forgiven, but I have let that part go by just like, oh, that was great. And then just seeing how I could apply those good times to my life where I can still share like, you know, the music and the experiences, right. With my kids and, um, but just move on from there. I don't know if that helped at all, but it's, it's just like, you know, it's just like exercising, like those mind practices of like, all right, this is okay. This, that, uh, the joy of like situations and then just like moving on and taking that into your life. Cause it wasn't all bad, you know? I like that narrative in terms of just kind of reframing that because, yeah. um, yeah, you don't want to focus on that, but I think it's wonderful that you are breaking the generational trauma that yeah. you've experienced that for your own kids. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It, like it definitely is like just breaking that cycle, right? Like that's what that is. Like it's, it's having to like understand what went wrong, but I don't have to keep on re replaying what went wrong. And I could still share about how strong my aunts are to my sons. I could still share how amazing my cousins were, you know what I mean? Or are right. Uh, but I don't have to uh, keep on telling them like, oh yeah, like, you know, they're SOBs or like they hurt your mom so much. Like it just is what it is. 
and that's just how the cookie crumbled you know mm-hmm. that can be that can be a little bit morbid for people but it's for me it's just like it's just hey it just is what it is and if it was supposed to be us together then it would have but we're here right now in this moment so that's neither here nor there you know just being present in this you know moment and, and I, I'd love your message about just protecting your peace. That's what it came down to. Like you needed to protect your peace and protect the peace of your kids, right? Mm -hmm. They're learning these things. And so with you modeling it, it's going to help them be able to say, Hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe I do not need to let go of some of these situations or relationships Mm -hmm. and that's going to be okay because you've set that example for them. So thank you so much, Nicolette. We could talk to you for a very long time because I do (laughs) on the regular. uh, But but at this time, we ask all of our guests to answer two questions. And the first question is, reflecting back, what would you tell your younger self? Uh, That she was amazing. That she was a strong, opinionated little girl, and that was okay. You know what I mean? And to never shut up right like it was okay for her to be strong-willed it was okay for for her to already think that she was a hot shit you know like it was okay for her to be a chubby you know to be chubby it was fine you know what I mean just pumping her up because that's all she needed that's all little Nico needed was just somebody like having a personal cheerleader and yeah like that that would have made loads of difference and instead of tough love more just love period that's all she needed I think that's my favorite answer I've gotten to that (laughs) no absolutely (laughs) oh that was awesome right like what did it what a difference would it make if people were just like it's okay you're like you're great like imagine like all like just this insecurities that we can cure if people would just stop giving us tough love tough love is good in moderation but or unconditional unconditional love oh, say it again yes. <laughs> unconditional love. oh my god yes like who normalized tough love jesus mm-hmm. that's right? a good question yeah <laughs> oh. like who taught us life was supposed to be hard no like no it doesn't have to be it really doesn't this has been too good so the second <laughs> question is looking forward what is one wish you have on your current journey Oh, oh my goodness, that I could inspire, that I could inspire someone else to do this type of healing work also, Um, that you deserve happiness, right? That some, that, that somebody can be like, man, because of your story, because you shared it, this is why I'm feeling so much better now. You know, like just to be able to help somebody like shine the light, you know, at the end of the tunnel, like, yo, we're over here. Turn that shit on yourself. Like, it's okay. You know, like, it's totally fine. You know, like just reminding people that they are not broken is like my ultimate thing, because uh, that would be fantastic if we just held a little bit more people in this world that understand that they are precious and they are gems all in their own. Right. You know what I mean? Wow. Regardless regardless of differences. Yes. I just got this great visual when you said like, we're all over here at the end of the tunnel. It just felt like everybody in the tunnel has their own lamp and they just don't know that they have it. And you're over here like, turn it on. on." And then you can walk and join everybody else in the light. Like, yes literally Tinkerbell, like, that's who I am. And I just want you to believe that you can fly. You know what I mean? Like, like, I didn't have a Tinkerbell. Nobody could teach me that. Like, nobody was that for me. And so imagine if like, you did have that Tinkerbell in your life that like, just believe it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just let it go. Because we're so conditioned to hold on to the damn trauma that we're not taught to not let it go, but that you can put it over here. It doesn't have to be right here all the time. I can put it here. That's all I want to just help remind people for, like that they, that they can do that. That'd be great. Imagine. I'm going to. (laughs) So thank you so much, Nicolette, for sharing space with us today. Oh, thank you guys so much. This was fantastic. I feel great. We want to hear from you. What or who have you let go to honor your peace? 
let us know on Instagram or our private Facebook group, Pivotal Moments HQ. We want to thank our producer and music director, Ron Johnson. This has been an Astronomicus DMR production. Thank you for listening. Remember, it's never too late and you're right on time.